So here we're going to have a look at enzymes. Now enzymes are, again, very important, uh, very important for the function of the human body. They are, in fact, a specific type of protein. Now enzymes are basically biological catalysts. So they're a specific type of protein that can act as a catalyst for all of the all of the, for, for for most of the reactions that occur in living things. So they speed up all of the reactions that occur in animals and humans and plants uh, by acting as catalysts. Now, unlike inorganic catalysts that we often use for our for our for our more industrial types of reactions and chemical processes, for example, platinum, uh, enzymes or biological catalysts are much, much more effective. So, firstly, enzymes are enzymes produce reaction rates that are much faster than inorganic catalysts. They are they they operate under normal conditions. So, whereas industrial catalysts often only work at very, very high temperatures and very, very high pressures. Enzymes work at the natural uh, temperatures and pressures that occur within, for example, the human body. They need to be able to operate in regular conditions like that to actually have uh, have, the, have their intended effect. So they operate under normal conditions. They're also more, much more sensitive than inorganic or industrial catalysts. They are, this means that enzymes can in fact be broken down and effectively are destroyed or, or, or made ineffective quite easily. Inorga whereas inorganic catalysts are often sort of metals, at like as I said, platinum, uh, which are not very easy to break down, enzymes are very easy to sort of alter such that they no longer work. And lastly, this is perhaps the most important part of uh, an enzyme's ability to catalyze reactions is that enzymes are very selective. So again, whereas inorganic catalysts such as platinum are actually very good catalysts for a very wide range of reactions, enzymes are very specific in that they only work for specific reactions, possibly only possibly an enzyme will actually only work as a catalyst for one one reaction that occurs within uh, the human body. So in that way, they are very selective. So there are four very important points that distinguish enzymes or biological catalysts from inorganic catalysts that we often use in more industrial chemical processes, which are very separate to this kind of organic chemistry. So enzymes are a specific type of protein, but how do they work? How do they work as catalysts? Well, a very important part of an, en of an enzyme is its active site. So if we were to draw an enzyme, so we know that an enzyme is a specific type of protein, and it is the tertiary structure or the three-dimensional shape of this protein molecule that uh, allows the enzyme to catalyze reactions. And so enzymes often have very specific shapes. We'll draw it just so we can visualize this process as something like this. So they often have sort of gaps or holes, which we refer to as the active site. Now what happens is that obviously uh, because enzymes are very selective, they only catalyze single reactions. And so we can refer to, if we talk about a second molecule here called the substrate, the substrate is the molecule undergoing the actual reaction that is being catalyzed by this enzyme. So what happens when an enzyme speeds up a reaction is that this substrate or this molecule that the enzyme that the enzyme is about to sort of work on moves into this hole in the enzyme. It moves into this hole and in fact forms, forms bonds with the active site. So these bonds may be in the form of First, we'll draw this in here. So, we're forming bonds with the active site, and these bonds may be hydrogen bonds or dipole bo dipole bonds or any other type of bond. In fact, 
Although our enzymes are in fact proteins, they may often they will often have other molecules or other particles that aren't part of the protein uh, forming part of them. So perhaps some some enzymes in fact have a metal ion here, which allows the enzyme to form a bond with one end of the substrate. If we have a, neg a substrate that has one end negatively charged, then that negatively charged end can form an iron dipole bond with a sodium ion at the active site, and that'll allow the enzyme to, to, do, its, to do its good work and catalyze this reaction. So sometimes our enzymes have extra molecules or extra ions that aren't in fact part of the enzyme but they are very necessary to the enzyme's process. And we call these extra things that aren't part of the protein cofactors. So in this case, we've got a substrate that has moved in and it's bonded to the active site of our enzyme as a result of our sodium ion, our sodium ion cofactor in the enzyme. And so what happens is that this bonding between the enzyme and the substrate So this bonding between the enzyme and the substrate weakens the bonds within the substrate. So by, uh, by forming these bonds between the end of our substrate and the active site, what's happening is that the bonds within the substrate are actually getting weaker. And so by weakening these bonds within the substrate, what we're doing is we refer to what we refer to the effect of the, these bonds between the enzyme and the active site. We refer to the effect of that as lowering the act the activation energy of the reaction. So what's happening here? Basically the substrate is moving in, forming bonds with the active site of the enzyme. And those bonds are weakening the bonds that are already present within the substrate. And what that does is it lowers the activation energy of the reaction, meaning, so the activation energy is the amount of energy required to start a reaction, to get a reaction going. So if we lower the activation energy of a reactant, of a reaction, then that means that the reaction will need less energy to get going, and so it will, it will progress or it will commence much easier and much quicker. So that means that by lowering the activation energy, uh, the reaction can occur much quicker and much more readily, and we can get through more of these reactions a lot quicker. So what happens when we weaken these bonds is that perhaps by weakening the bonds, we'll lower the activation energy and we'll split this substrate molecule into two. So we've weakened the bonds in the middle and split our substrate into two different molecules. And that may be the only reaction that this enzyme catalyzes. So this enzyme is simply here possibly to split our substrate molecule in two, and that may be the reaction that our enzyme is, uh, is here to catalyze. So that's just one possible effect. Obviously, there are lots of other types of reactions that the substrate may undergo after bonding with the active site of the enzyme. But simply, that bonding with the active site and the way in which uh, the substrate bonds with the active site is going to allow the reaction that needs to undergo in, for example, the human body Maybe a very, it's a very vital reaction, so this enzyme allows that reaction to occur much, e much more easily and much more readily, and thus uh, we can get through a lot. We can make the reaction occur much quicker, as is required by our body. Now, one last important thing to, uh, to consider, or to be aware of, is this idea that uh, enzymes are, in fact, much more sensitive than, uh, than inorganic catalysts. Now what that means is that if we, if this, uh, if this enzyme experiences a change in temperature, if it experiences a change in pH, or if, we or if it has, you know, certain chemicals added to it, then what these, what these effects, what these changes can do is they can really, really negatively affect the tertiary structure of the enzyme. And of course, the tertiary structure of the enzyme is what allows it to, uh, to catalyze a reaction. So if we change the temperature, uh, then that enzyme, the tertiary structure of an enzyme is likely to change and thus uh, it may, not, may no longer be effective. And so we call this process of, uh, of sort of breaking down or, or stopping the enzyme from being effective, 
We call this process denaturation. Denaturation. So we're denaturing. We are in fact denaturing our enzyme. So denatur denaturing is actually a uh, an un sort of we can't undo. A, this, uh, this denaturing process, once once an enzyme has been denatured, we can we cannot fix it. So if we if we heat an enzyme beyond uh, beyond the range of temperatures that it can still operate at, then we've denatured it and it, the enzyme is no longer useful. Now what happens often when, when we have lots of denatured enzymes together is that obviously their tertiary structure is altered quite negatively, and so we get a very random tertiary structure developing. And if we have lots and lots of enzymes all together that have all been denatured and their tertiary structures are all sort of changing randomly, then what we can get is we can get lots of denatured enzymes coming together and uh, sort of forming bonds with their loose random sort of random strings of protein molecules. So an enzyme is, as I said, a specific protein. And so if our, pro our protein or our, or our long polypeptide chain will form a very random loopy shape, that, poly that, that string of amino acids will form a... Uh, a very loopy long shape, so we've got our amino acids here, and we may get a very sort of loopy shape like this. And if we have lots of denatured enzymes all together, then they will kind of come together and bond via these loops. And so what we get, what we call, what we call it when we have lots of denatured enzymes coming together and bonding in a big clump, is we call that coagulation. So if we wanted to look at perhaps a, a quite a quite a real life day to day situation of enzyme denaturation denaturation then all we have to do is look at let's take the example of cooking cooking an egg for breakfast so if we've got an egg here if we've got our egg just like this now obviously when we pour the egg into the fry pan we actually have when we pour the egg into the fry pan the egg white or the egg the egg white is in fact very clear we can't it's uh, it's sort of see through now as we cook the as we cook our egg then we do in fact get it we we do in fact get the egg white to turn white now why does this happen why does an egg white turn white while we cook it well obviously when we're cooking it on our frying pan you know it's getting it's getting pretty hot. It's a bit of bit of steam and stuff coming off it, so we're heating up our egg white a lot. Now, because we're heating we're heating it up so much that in fact the enzymes in our egg in our egg white are denaturing. And so as they denature, the enzymes in our egg white are in fact are sort of losing their tertiary structure, forming these random loops, and they are all coagulating. And so it's that coagulation that causes the change in color of the egg white uh, from clear to in fact. A white color. So, the the change in color of an egg as we cook it is in fact caused by coagulation. So that's pretty much all we need to know about enzymes for the moment. They are basically biological catalysts that are much more effective and specific and sort of uh, yeah, very specific and sensitive. They're much more specific and sensitive than inorganic or industrial catalysts that we use for for reactions that don't occur within the human body. And so these are very important to the, uh, the proper functioning of bodies of animals and humans and of course uh, the proper functioning of plants.